awesome. I don't know what we could do to, I think some of the people watching might be a little overwhelmed with that, but wait, how about if you do it and I'll try to, yeah. I'll try to mark the time well, a little bit more. What I was doing is just making a more elaborate, yeah. I mean, I didn't make this, this is a very old composition, but it's built oh. on the same structure mm -hmm. of this idea of different speeds and using those proportions to make the, the full right. picture. So I'm going to recite it and then I'll play it. How's that? Okay. Okay. Great. And I'm going to count using my fingers here. One, two, three, four, and then second beat or bar, th three, four, third bar, three, two, Great. three, four, fourth bar, four, two. So you guys practice three. this with us. So da genaga takita genaga da ta da ki da da ta te kata ga di gen na gen na gen takita genaga da ta da ki da da ta te kata ga di gen da kat da ta da ki da da ta te kata ga di gen da kat da ta da ki da da ta te kata ga di gen da ta genaga takita genaga da ta da ki da da ta te kata ga di gen na gen na gen takita genaga da ta da ki da da ta te kata ga di gen da kat da ta da ki da da ta te kata ga di gen da kat da ta da ki da da ta te kata ga di gen da da genaga takita genaga da ta da da ta kata ga di gen na gen na gen takita genaga da ta da da ta kata ga di gen da kat da ta da da ta te kata ga di gen da kat da ta da da ta te kata ga di gen da awesome okay and so this is one of the cool things even if you go back just to that first exercise we did and think about this one but the idea is it gives you such a presence of mind to think about the smallest mm -hmm. to the micro. What is our smallest subdivision that mm -hmm. we're trying to maintain and feel mm -hmm. and make groove? At the same time, I'm also managing that we're in 4-4. Four, four, yeah. But not in four. We're in four bars or 4-4. Four, four, mm -hmm. Really, 16. 16 total, And yeah. then start to think, well, how many times am I going through that? Mm -hmm. So you're seeing everything from the micro. Yep all the way to a macro and even the furthest macro. Mm -hmm. And again, before when I was saying that tabla gives so much other benefit, what music as a drummer or percussionist wouldn't that be advantageous for? Yeah. And that's one of the cool things is you start to see proportion and everything just starts to have a, such a vivid picture. You know, speaking of, we're using visual terms, I'm glad you did because when you were talking about that, the micro out a bit and then the big macro, I immediately thought of fractals. Right? Are you guys hip to fractals? Look up fractals. Think about what Randy just said. Because it's that idea of like the micro then spins out into a larger form, right? And then that form takes on characteristics of the small form, but then the larger form also takes on those characteristics. And it really is this, it's like a spiral, right? But that, it, anyway, just look up fractals. But this is the beautiful <laughs> thing about that mind's eye picture. Mm -hmm. And I, you know, also to say, you said that about this idea of we're talking about a lot of visuals. Mm -hmm. One thing I want to kind of implore to anybody who's watching this video, because the one mm -hmm. thing that I'm always kind of hit with as far as a, a feedback from anyone who's starting to study Indian percussion is it's I'm not very good at math and it mm -hmm. seems very mathematical. Mm -hmm. I am horrible. I am completely remedial when it comes to math. Don't ask me about this mm -hmm. times that. Don't ask me to balance a checkbook. I am hopeless, mm -hmm. but I'm pretty good at this mm -hmm. because I think of it more about shape and proportion mm -hmm. than I think about the mathematics. Later on, yeah. I start to understand the math and right. I can explain it. But in the moment, my process, my mind's eye picture has nothing to do with mathematics. Okay, good. So, yeah, don't be intimidated. In other words, I think, and I'm the same way as you. I, I had dyslexia when I was young, but I was really, so I was bad at spelling and things, but I was really good at visualizing shapes and three, even three-dimensional forms. You know, I could hold those in my mind. I could plan, like, how, how to build something yeah. just by thinking about it. Um, but that's drumming. It all drumming to me. It's like architecture. You are building something. You're building form. You're building structures. Exactly. Yeah. In fact, one of my teachers said, "Well, architecture is like frozen music." I love right? that. Right, like a cathedral. Yeah, He's that's like, a great one. Music frozen in time. I'm gonna have to steal that. Steal it. Yeah. <laughs> that's why we're here. <laughs> steal from each other. <laughs> yeah. Um, so, whatever works for you. Just like Randy was saying about the notation too. Whatever makes sense to you, visually. Uh, whether that's in your mind, thinking about the shapes of the, or the whatever it is, the shapes or the textures uh, to however you put that on paper is what you need to do. Don't, don't try to learn it from the math. Learn well, it from the music. Singing, you know, the people are always somebody, if you can say it, you can play it. Right. 
tabla, you have to say it. You have to, that's so part of the So even just teaching. riffing, you have a one f phrase. Oh, I learned this phrase, uh, dati gene. Uh -huh. Okay, dati gene, dati gene, dati gene, dati gene, gene, dati 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 gene. I'm just saying one little phrase yep. and I'm just playing Flip, with it, wrenching it. it and flipping it. And even just that, just this little word play. I do this yep. sometimes in the car when yep. the radio's not doing it for me. I turn it off or, or put, start to recite over right. whatever's on the radio. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But yeah, the okay. more you get into this flow, every music is about finding that flow, yeah. letting it out. And so vocalizing it, taking one little tabla phrase, da, da, tete. I start there, da, da, tete, da, da, flip it. Tete, da, da, tete, da, da, tete, da, da. Make them back to back, da, da, tete. Change the shape, get rid of yeah. one da. Da te te, da te te. Uh -huh. Now it's a three. Right. If I put that uh, te te in front of it, te te da te te, te te da te te, te te da te te. Yep. Now it's a phrase of five. And so just using these kind of words as building blocks yep. to find that architecture, mm. this is such a great way. And you don't have to have this great vocabulary of tons of tabla phrases. Right. Any of these little words that you picked up in today's video, just start to recite them and riff on them and have fun with them. And it becomes this language thing where it just starts to come out in your playing. Mm. You know what I'm thinking right now? This is so much fun. And I, now I want to get out my tabla again and <laughs> practice. <laughs> this makes me want to practice. Good. Have fun, you guys, yeah. with music. You know, the, in the music therapy community, and I'm sure beyond, not only in the music therapy community, but there's this idea of musicking. That is a word. You can look it up. But musicking, and what you were just saying reminded me of musicking, which is being being musical, you know, yeah. playing with the elements of music. What A big mistake that a lot of students make is I think they, they look to, you know, they look to authority figures to tell them what to do, to tell them what to play, right? Show me the rhythms. Show me, actually I made a video called Show Me the Rhythms a long time ago, that's another story. But you know, they, they have this idea that well, like, tell me what to play, yeah. how, and that's not what music should be. It, part of it is that, but part of it is what Randy was just saying. Take something simple, we can think of this as elemental, right? You play with the elements and own it. Yeah. It's for Maybe you, it right. it's your music, you know, at that point. But yeah, you can, that's so beautiful. Well, that was it. something that, you know, it was also part of my, my tabla training. Oh, yeah. I have to say that, you know, with my, I've been with my tabla teacher. This is 25 years now that I've been his student. Long wow. time, yeah. And at one point, I was really discouraged because I, I was learning and I felt like I was getting somewhere with the instrument, but I felt like I was a, a mimic, like a parrot. Right. I could speak it, but I wasn't, I wasn't being really truthful to me. I was impersonating. And at one point, he told me, he said, you have to find your way. You can't be mm. me. At some point, you have to step off of that path and find your way to speak your ideas. And at that point, it gives me validation because if my teacher, who's the great maestro of this instrument, says that it's okay for me to do that, yeah. and you know what, I'm gonna, I'm gonna start to do that. And that was the best thing because now I, I know a lot of the traditional ideas, but I'm also far more comfortable to just speak conversationally. Right. And I always yeah. tell my students, it's like, I could open a book of Shakespearean sonnets and I could recite that, yeah. but is that conversation, is that dialogue? Right, and so music is also, it's a language, right? It's about dialoguing. If we're gonna get together and play, if I come in with just my ideas, am I listening to you? Mm -hmm. Am I reacting? Right. Or am I just coming to, I'm giving a speech? Right. But the moment now we're in dialogue, I have no way to prepare. How do I prepare? By having a good vocabulary. Yep. Right, the more I can express myself, in, whether in a simple way or eloquent way, it doesn't matter if I can get the idea out, mission accomplished. And so if I think about everything that I'm doing as just vocabulary, Mm -hmm. And now speak it in your way, not about memorization, but comprehension. Mm -hmm. Conversation. Conversation. Let's talk a little bit about that because we, before we shot the videos today, we were talking, um, we're just talking, and the, that subject of kind of, you know, here's the way an instrument's supposed to be played, right? And you, you find some people take that position of, well, that's not traditional, and what are you doing? And how. So, can you talk a little bit? You, you have a little, but you, you studied from a, ma a master uh, on, on the tabla. Can you go back and, and just talk about from when you started to where you are now and why people should feel comfortable, you know, carrying, uh, having their own voice? Yeah, I, I mean, I, I feel that there's incredible value, obviously, in knowing the history of any subject you're working from, mm -hmm. right? You don't know the history, you're bound to repeat it, right? This kind of thing. And so it, 
I don't consider myself a traditional musician in the sense that I play this, I play that, I find my own way. But I am a firm believer that if I have strong roots in the tradition, it's again back to that architecture thing. If the foundation is strong, I can build the building as tall as I want, as modern as I want, I can touch the sky with it. Mm -hmm. But if the foundation is not strong, the whole thing might come crumbling down. So even when I approach things in a contemporary way or in my way, it's still based on a lot of kind of study mm -hmm. and research and respect for the subject. Mm -hmm. But one thing that I don't do is I don't put any subject that I'm learning on a pedestal on a shelf mm -hmm. where it, don't look at it, don't take it down, don't put your fingerprints on it, don't get it dirty. Mm -hmm. The best thing you can do is put your fingerprints on it, mm -hmm. get it dirty. Mm -hmm. And I'm gonna use your truck that's out there as an example. <laughs> yeah. You wanna learn how to, to build cars, fix engines, the best thing you can do is take some things apart, rip, it apart. rip it apart and, yeah. and build it back up. Yeah. You learn so much through that process. And so you have to get your hands dirty. Yeah. You have to make a mess of things sometimes. And that means you might break eggs and you might offend some people along the way. Right. You can't concern yourself with it. It's a musical instrument. Yeah. Let the music out. You want to go deeper, go into the tradition. That will inform a lot of ideas. It will inform repertoire. It will inform technique. It will it send you on such a journey. Mm. But in the same sense, don't lose sight of your roots and who you are. And that's also valid and worth something. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. And if you only restrict yourself to, you know, the classic. Uh, and what is classic anyway? Classic is just what came right before you and was established by the players in the recent past. Because classic has changed over time, right? Classic, mm -hmm. I mean, cl music's always evolving. So, first of all, pay attention to that. But oh, yeah. don't deny the world, you know, your unique voice, right? You, you have things to offer that your teacher, all, all, with all due respect, couldn't offer because he doesn't have the same uh, training as you, the background, the, you know, you, you come from a different culture. Sure. It's not yes. like one is better than the no, other. No, but That's it's not, important to be to it's, be true to who you it's are. It's different, yeah, yeah, you, you I think are, sometimes we sacrifice those things to learn something else. Yeah. We don't need to do that. That's part of the beauty is you make a new recipe. Right. And, you know, people always talk about in terms of like Randy is a world percussionist. Mm -hmm. I have to say that, especially in this day and age, when people say that, I always respond that I'm an American percussionist. Mm -hmm. And it's not about this patriotic thing. It's about embracing what is really American, that we're a melting pot culture. We live in Los Angeles, the, one of the most multicultural diverse cities in the world. Mm -hmm. It's all here. Mm -hmm. It's all in our backyard. The sounds, the 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 language, the the music, the food, the the culture, the dress, whatever it is, whatever facet of exploring our culture, what doesn't LA have? And so to me, it's the most kind of inherently thing as an American thing to look what's in your backyard mm -hmm. and embrace that soundscape is like, this is now my palette of colors to work with. And so to me, it would be almost kind of un-American, un-melting pot thing to have blinders on and not be open to these kind of things, right. right? And even when you talk about American percussion, the drum set, it is an amalgamation of all kinds of things from around the world. All it, sorts it's of a, things. It's a melting pot instrument. Yeah. The root of all American music as a drummer is this idea, let me embrace what's past my backyard. Right. And why not? And that's so a, I think that way. That's a great example. You know, yeah, think about the drum set. And I'm not an expert on this, but my, my understanding is that, you know, the tom-toms were like these, like, Chinese, sure. literal, like tum-tums. Yeah. And then the hi-hats and cymbals, of course, are Turkish and, yeah. you know, uh, and then what else? Well, military, I mean, snare drum, Look, even bass as far drum. as around the world, this drum, the baya or bayan, has a very interesting shape. Now, it's chrome plated, but if I were to take the chrome off, you would notice that this is actually copper. Mm -hmm. So in Western orchestral music, we have a bold-shaped copper bass drum, right. timpani. Right. Let me tell you that this is the great, 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 great grandfather of timpani. I believe it. Because in uh, ancient time in India, time of Akbar, you could see in paintings um, going to battle on elephant back with these kettle drums. Nakers. Were, right. Before, and before Nakers, <laughs> and before they called Nakara in uh, India, uh -huh. Nagare in Iran. Mm. And the Persians were part of yep. what? kind of uh, conquered North India. Right. So Nagare, Nagara, Nakers in early European music, yeah. timpani is just the addition of the pedal. Mm -hmm. the, this and the timpani have the same history. And so what isn't world percussion, right? Yeah, the right. orchestra, the Western percussion, everything is world percussion. Yeah, yeah, of course, yeah. That's great to know. That's awesome. I'm excited about this. All right. <laughs> um, we're gonna do one. Uh, we're gonna do one more video, and I want to ask Randy to talk about some of um, 
how he got to be where he is with his group, um, Hands Ensemble, and also just, we're going to talk about a, a, a dear teacher and friend, John Bergamo, and uh, we'll do that in another cool. video. Thanks for watching, you guys.